I, I, we, you've been waiting patiently. <laughs> Uh, I'm so thrilled that you're here because this is such an issue for all of us, I think. I thought it was just me. This is another one of these cases where uh, I, I put out the question, because I like to learn here too, and I put out the question a couple months ago and said to families, what do you do about babysitting? And, <clears throat> and really my secret thing was that I thought, this is going to help me and I'm going to know what I should be doing about babysitting because <laughs> it's a never-ending problem for, for my husband and I. Uh, we never ever go anywhere, do anything ever. <laughs> And I haven't for years. There's been like one huge exception, and it literally was that we had Ashley come to our house and babysit. Uh, well, I don't, we went to a karaoke night. Right. That's what we did. I was trying to think what we did. How mm -hmm. could I forget? Because I've been out exactly once in three years. Um, it's really difficult, really, really difficult. And so you agreed to come in and talk about, because you have a wealth of knowledge. So let's start with uh, who you are and how long you've been working with children. Well, I'm Ashley, and I've been here, I've been working with kids on the spectrum for almost five years now, since I was in my undergraduate. Mm -hmm. My professor told me, I think you'd be really good at ABA, or, uh -huh. and she referred me here to CARD. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's how it all began, and okay. I'm still around. <laughs> but you have a wealth of knowledge with, with babysitting right. as well as ABA, too. Mm -hmm. And you continue. That's something that you, um, you know, do we call it nanny anymore? Do we? I do. Some, or... some of the kids call me their nanny. Okay. I do. I still do it regularly. I'm still putting myself through school, so it's a great way for me to add some extra income. Uh -huh. And um, I realize how important it is for families, whether you have a child on the spectrum or a child with special needs, or just a lot of children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need help. Yeah, and, um, everybody needs a break. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And I think, you know, one of the things that happens in, in families with typically developing children is that, you know, there might be a period of time when they don't get babysitters because right. the kids are little, but there usually is the shift to, okay, we have babysitters babysitters that we get on a regular basis and they mm -hmm. do that but for whatever reason and I think there are a lot of them families you know like us that have kids on the spectrum we have a harder time making that shift into leaving our children with other people I think part of it is that we you know sometimes our children aren't vocal enough about telling us if something goes wrong so we're mm -hmm. fearful um, but there's also the big thing about we're afraid that somebody's gonna mess it up that we've worked 40 right. hours to you know target a behavior and we're you know if it's that we're putting it on extinction and we're not feeding it attention and then somebody we're my fear always is somebody's going to come in and pay attention to something and I'm going to have a new mess oh and I know I know that from my years in the field I don't want that to happen either right and either does the clinical team or the, the teacher or anyone like that yeah but I think importantly um with all parents but especially parents of a child with special needs is the notion the idea of caring for the caregiver taking care of yourself and mm. sometimes that means extra help yes and we see some research that suggests that parents who actually bring in respite or babysitters mm -hmm. they have reduced stress in their house and how much better environment for love and nurturing if there is less stress and, yeah. I, and relating to each other intentionally and being able to enjoy time together and so we a lot of families do get funding for respite yes. you have to check it out with your regional center um, also looking into insurance companies I was talking to our accounts uh, yeah. manager about it and I was like do do our families have this do we know because you know we definitely want to encourage them to yeah. use it but um, the respite agencies out there are really helpful and a lot of them are run by parents or people in the community who really want to help. It's not a you know, multi-million dollar business that right. they're running. Right. <clears throat> and you get younger people who are fun, and sometimes you get older people who are more experienced, but yeah. there is definitely, you want to find the right person yeah. for your family. And n not be afraid to say no to someone who comes in. And um, when you, in the, first part of the process when you're maybe looking for a babysitter you have a lot more leeway in having interviews and you can ask questions about how do you feel about a child with special needs mm -hmm. and what would you do in this situation and you can offer tools like e-learning which have a behavior management module in it mm -hmm. um, to help support them yeah and uh, you can offer many more things uh, with rest that you don't have as as many um, options for how you can train the person and, yeah. and um, 
interviewing and stuff, but you can work with the agency and kind of ask yourself some questions. What do I need? When do I need this person? Do I need help at the grocery store? Yeah. Is my kid going to knock down every single cereal box on the aisle? Because, you know, I think, and that's a really good point, Ashley, because I think that some people think that respite and babysitting is only for when you are out of the house. No. And there it isn't. Right. There are different needs. Some agencies won't leave the respite caregiver at your house alone. Mm -hmm. So in that situation, you might need to budget for a babysitter for mm -hmm. some kind of um, date nights or those kinds of things where right. you're going to be out of the house. But like I said, working with agencies and asking okay. yourself questions about what your needs are and what your mm -hmm. child's needs are before you get to that level where you're working with an agency yeah. is important because if you know what you want, you're much more likely to get it. Let's go back just a little bit and talk about respite in terms of, because here in California, we have regional centers. Mm -hmm. And if you are a client to the regional center, you have the ability to request respite. It's mm -hmm. a really interesting thing because, it it, especially in my local support group, everybody talks about it's so different who gets what respite. And I, I don't know how they determine it, but it's a very different thing for a lot of people. But you should ask for it. And a lot of people aren't told that they're eligible for it. So you really got to ask for it. And they'll, they'll, a lot of times we hear that they'll say, Say, well how much did you want and it's this very cagey thing and uh and i certainly when it came time for us I, I didn't know about it and i was told ask for it and they said well how much do you want and i said I, I don't how much can i have right <laughs> and, right and i i didn't know what was the appropriate amount so i went to my local support group said what does everybody else have then you got to be really careful though don't i in my opinion don't shoot for the moon and ask for too much ask for what you're really going to use right. because if you don't use it they'll take it away right and so that plays into the planning aspect. So yes. once you do go through this whole process and you've found someone, because um, you're so excited about date night with your husband, yes. um, you know, it is a transition. So you have to invest some time in this person um, because you're bringing them into your home and you're probably well versed in that, having therapists and that kind yes. of stuff. Yes, but it's but different it is when always you're leaving. a transition, right? Yeah. And having your spending some time to kind of like overlap with that person, let yeah. them get to know this kind of routine, and let them first observe you with the child and see what your expectations are of their yeah. language, of their behavior, and then giving them the opportunity to work with you side by side with the child. Yeah. And then from there, you can kind of see warning signs. You know, if the person lacks interest, if they seem more interested in their paycheck than the child, yeah. um, if they're constantly late, um, those types of things are things that you want to look at too. And so if you do invest the time to kind of transition the person in, you'll also be able to weed out someone who might not be right for your family. Yeah. And if your child maybe has a Averse reaction to the person, then yeah. you know. I think I would give it some time, but our kids are pretty um, intuitive about yeah. different people, and they're able it to read people well. So I think, um, like with your son, we get along really well, and I think you know, I might be able to pull one over on Ashley, yeah. or you know. But we enjoy our time together, and yeah. I think that makes you feel comfortable about going out. Yeah. Well, he asks for you. Mm -hmm. He would. He's like, why don't you and Dad go out and have Ashley come? Like he would right. rather be with you because you're really, really fun. And I know that you don't just let him do whatever he no. wants to, that it's a very structured time, but it's still really fun for right. him. So, uh, and they probably, and I'm going to admit my bad parenting, that not probably, in all likelihood, really realistically, you spend more time interacting with him one-on-one -on -one than I do because I'm folding laundry and right. putting dishes in the dishwasher and those kinds of things. And uh, that's, but that's your job, my job when I'm there or, a, or another babysitter or respite worker, that's their job. And I think that's another balancing point for parents. I think especially if you have more than one child, your mm -hmm. tendency might be like, oh, okay, they can watch both. But that's another thing is if you really need someone to help with your other kids or you need help around the house, then to not be af afraid of trying to seek help for that. And that takes budgeting and other types of planning, but it is important and it, we see that it reduces stress and it gives you time to relate to your partner. Yeah. Um, 
And those are all important things because we can get lost in the day to day when it's homework and field yes. trips and on the weekend, you know, Costco and all those things. Yes. So Absolutely. we want to want to have a good balance, and I think that's definitely important. Absolutely. Well, we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to come back and go back to talking about expectations because I think that's a really important. And everybody's going to have individual expectations, but making them abundantly clear to whoever it is that you're working on, what because we're more likely to be successful if we say what our expectations are, right? Right. Okay, so we're going to take a break and we're going to be back more with Ashley Cole as we're talking about babysitting and respite. Is this not a good topic? Stick with us. Welcome back to Autism Live. I'm Shannon Penrod. We're here at the Center for Autism and Related Disorders talking to Ashley Colas, who's talking with us about babysitting and respite care and how we arrange these things in a positive way, because uh, I just can't seem to make it work except with you. <laughs> and, I do, and I have to say this, too, that, you know, how wonderful. It had not occurred to me that I could, uh, and you have to make sure if you have an ABA provider that it's okay with them, right? right? But, um, but but that sometimes some of the ABA providers, some of the therapists are willing to babysit on the side and be paid individually for that um, because they're putting themselves through school and, and doing those kinds of right. things. So that hadn't, frankly, occurred to me before because I think I was underslept and <laughs> over underslept, yeah. overwhelmed. Um, so how wonderful to do that but I want to go back to you brought up expectations mm -hmm. and and how it's so important for the parent to know what their expectations are but also um, there are some expectations that the, the the caregiver is going to have as well and that would be a good question to ask them about what are your expectations right mm -hmm. um, some parents I mean I, I I see this with typically developing uh, kids with typically developing you know what I'm trying to say it's that yeah, time of typical. the day Parents of typically developing children who have this expectation that their babysitters are not only going to watch all 12 of their children, but mm -hmm. they're also going to do the ironing, make the beds, right. uh, clean the kitchen, vacuum, at which I just look and go, are you kidding me? That seems so shocking to me, and they pay less than we pay, and I just go, you know, what are you, you, you what are you doing? Yeah, I've met some of those parents. I'm sure, <laughs> um, and I think that in, in your, I know people have come and babysat for us in the past um, that, because we had a couple of college students that babysat for us mm -hmm. the first couple of years, then they graduated, and then, you know, I was completely alone in the dark. <laughs> um, but they had come from other people and said, you know, so where do I put away the dishes and this, and I said, right. oh, um, no, if you touch my dishwasher, I will be upset because it means you won't be working with my child and playing with my child. You're here to be with my child. I expect until he is asleep and unconscious that you are with him. Right. Um, and that please do not do any housework. When he is asleep, if there is a mess from the stuff that you guys have taken out, I would love it if you picked up things then. And I especially love it when people pick things up as they're, because right. my child gets overwhelmed if you pull out five things, but do not do housework while my child is awake. And that's, I mean, and that's an expectation that you have. And mm -hmm. it's really great that you are able to communicate that with them before and they know okay with this child I need to do this it's just like with therapy or mm -hmm. just like with a school teacher it's mm -hmm. different every year it's different yeah. with every teacher and every therapist so for me at one family that I, I babysit for their children regularly every mm -hmm. week and I put away their dishes after they eat dinner because mm -hmm. I usually feed them dinner mm -hmm. and then I might put away their toys after they go to sleep but other than that I really I really don't do anything else around yeah. the house because I am with them and they have a small child who needs to be either held or be holding my hand at all times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, that is something that the parents have communicated with me like, oh, when they're done, you can put their dishes away. But that's a really great point is, and is prioritizing for, for the sitter or for the respite worker what they should be doing. Should they yeah. be playing outside? And then right. using that time that we talked about, maybe like overlapping or sharing time with the child yeah. and the caregiver that you're bringing in and interacting with the child and kind of modeling the behavior. That's yeah. how we learn is by observing our environment. So, And for those of you who don't know in terms of overlapping, because that's kind of a, right. you know, a therapy term, that you know, you're know you there while they're there. Mm -hmm. That you're, you're the same time, so they see how, as you said, how you're interacting with them. You see 
see how they're interacting with them. Um, a really important thing to do. We never want to do that because it's expensive. And if you're looking for the date night, you run it, the date night is expensive. By the time you pay and you go out and you pay for the gas and whatever the entertainment is that you're doing and right. the dinner and everything, and then you pay the babysitter and it's like, holy moly, this is why we don't go out. And then on top of that, you want to have them come for three or four hours beforehand on a different day. It gets expensive. But you know what? That three or four hours ends up saving you a whole lot, right? Right. And I think that it's it's budgeting and we're all in a in a position where we really need to watch our finances. Yeah. And so it does take a good amount of planning. But I think that those three or four hours that you might be out with your husband or out with your friends or doing something are much more enjoyable when you feel like yeah. you can really trust someone. The person there loves your child and is going to be there for them. Yeah. You're going to be able to be much more present where you are. So I, I really firmly suggest that for my friends who have young children, uh -huh. I have a friend who's pregnant and she definitely needs help. And so she said, what do I do? Help me. So I yeah. went through all, you know, what do you ask the person? And I yeah. wrote down all the interview questions for her and I talked to her about overlapping. And she's like, I never thought about that. Yeah. But it's true because her daughter does have a little bit of a little issue with her speech so sometimes uh -huh. you have to kind of decipher what she's right, saying right and she's That's very most kids. quiet yeah and she's so sweet but she's very quiet so um just spending time like decide having someone yeah. decode for you what what she's saying is important it and is. then once you get used to her you know what she's saying of most course. of the time but that's another thing with our kids too is that yes. sometimes their speech might be an issue yeah. and so you want to make sure that the person is able to understand them and this means this or yes that's the and along the lines of the expectations and yes. then understanding um, behavior management too I think that's important yeah and so one Good you point. gotta find someone who's comfortable with your child's level of needs as far as behavior management and then giving them the tools for that so like I mentioned e-learning has a great module yes mm -hmm. a wonderful wonderful module they wouldn't even necessarily need to do the whole thing but right. do the behavior module I think that's really important um, so many things in there that I wanted to talk about Ashley that you brought up but uh, giving them having the expectation that you're going to have to train them to deal with behavior and the proper response and i think that's one of those things like i said before we're so afraid somebody's going to come in and mess up but if you know the thing that you've been working on forever and right. now you've got to go back and work on it but if you took those three hours and did an overlap and taught them and said so if he does this then i'm going to do this and you brought up you're going to be so much more comfortable on your date night right. with your spouse but you're also going to i think that that person is going to be more likely to stick around too right because if they know how to deal with the challenging behavior they're not going to be as overwhelmed by it right and i think as myself and other people that i know that go into people's homes and they provide babysitting or other people i know that give uh provide respite services mm -hmm. They want to work with the parents as a team. They don't want to be the parent. Yeah. So having kind of a collaborative effort, which we want with schools as well, it's the yeah. same as having someone come into your home, is really important because we feel supported, and then we know that we can support the family. Right. And so that that whole um, process is really important for everyone to be happy and to continue with, with working with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then another point that I wanted to bring up when mm -hmm. you were talking was that I know a lot of the supervisors at CARD and a lot of the um, people that I know that work in the field are really excited about babysitter and nanny training because yes. we want that consistency. Yes. And um, I remember reading an email and asking about that for a child, like, can we train this nanny? And they, the supervisor's like, I'm all for nanny training. So yeah. it is something that you can also ask your supervisor about. Would you, I'm bringing a babysitter in, would you mind overlapping or could this person come to the clinic? And mm -hmm. you can always ask. The worst yeah. thing you're gonna hear is no. I can't imagine why right. they would say no. So great point, great yeah, point. Yeah, and they're gonna support you in some way. It might not be the way that you ask for, but it might be the right way for the child. Yeah. Um, so I think that it's good to to kind of ask for that help too on the clinical side if you have a Absolutely. team that you're working with. Absolutely. If you're if you're doing if you've got a, a team that's coming in 
that ask them go to the clinic or to have them overlap when the therapist is there if you're doing the workshop they could come when the workshop person is there mm -hmm. um, if you're doing the you're doing cardio learning and skills at home you could have them do the cardio learning right. and and, and uh, train them yourself but what a wonderful and I can completely see that because we all my son just spent the weekend with grandma <laughs> You know, Grandma has seen a lot of the ABA over the year, but you know, some sticks and some some doesn't. Right. And uh, it's fascinating to see the kinds of things that my son is saying and doing today versus what he was saying and doing on Thursday before I left. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have to tighten some screws here and there to see. She said to me that there was at least one day when uh, she asked him to do something and he said no, and I said you did not let him get away with that. And she said, well, I didn't want to push it. And I was like, that never. We don't ever do that. You ask right. them to do something, you have to follow through. And if that means that the TV stays off for the next year, whatever it takes, there has to be some follow through here. We don't we don't give paychecks when the when the behavior that we want isn't there. And she's like, OK, all right. Yeah. And that's a, I mean, that's where the overlap comes in. Yeah, I have a child who says no to me a lot or runs away and he his parents. We were talking about this a little bit on the break. His parents don't always want to hear what yeah. happens that is not great because he's right. so smart and he's amazing and he's so little and right. he does so many amazing things for his age but they're still happening so we are talking about having that open communication and trust yes. so that you definitely want to know if a new behavior has come up when you're not home yes or if something's happening you know when you're not in the house or you know any of yeah. those little things it's kind of like an extra set of eyes and ears yeah and and putting that in the expectations right of saying right. And when i come home here are the kinds of things i want to hear about right and then being open-minded to maybe some of them are not things that you want to hear you don't right. want to hear that your son is hitting his sister when you're not there right. or that your son you know decided he was going to pee on the floor instead of in the toilet when you were at home either but right. those are things that happen and you also want to support the caregiver in any kind of discipline that you choose because you also don't want them to be like okay that just right. happened and we're not going to do right. anything There's about no it because it is important you know right, to, right, right. to deal with those behaviors so being open-minded and supportive because I know I felt sometimes like oh I can't say anything these parents are going to be upset if I say something right but um I know that as a parent, I would want to know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, me too. I want to know everything. Right. Which leads me to where where are you on nanny cams? How do you feel being on the other side of it? How do you feel about nanny cams? I think that for me, doing so many years of therapy, I'm used to doing therapy like someone's watching me. Yeah. And I've worked in both center-based and home-based ther therapy mm -hmm. t environments. And... Uh, I have worked in front of nanny cams and not in front of nanny cams. And I... I like them uh -huh. um, because I think that sometimes they keep you in check. So I always try to just, I do everything like I'm in front of a camera yeah, because yeah. I would want that to be how someone would conduct themselves with my child, like I'm always watching. Isn't that a good answer? Isn't that the, <laughs> that's the best answer, Ashley, because honestly, you know, and I've shared this before on the show, that anytime somebody came in my home to do therapy, I said, and by the way, there are cameras, I'm going okay. in the other room, but I'm going to see and hear everything that you do. So don't say or do anything that you don't want me to hear or see. Um, and it was always interesting to me, people's reactions. Some people were like, oh, you know, right? And then I made sure I watched really well mm -hmm. every single twitch and moment where other people were like, oh, that's wonderful. I'm yeah. so glad. And and then I felt that much more comfortable and I didn't wasn't as glued to the monitor. I was always listening to learn, but wasn't as glued to the monitor. I just loved that response. Right. That go ahead, look, because everything I'm going to be doing is on right. the up and up. So I welcome, and that is the right answer always. I, I think. think some people wouldn't agree, but I think it's important. And I have a little niece and she's like the apple of my eye and uh -huh. my fiance and I adore her. But I'm like, oh, we need to get a nanny cam for her because I yeah. want to, you know, I want to make sure that everyone's taking care of her yes. the way that everyone else takes care of her. So yeah. it is important. And I think that, um, we're kind of moving in an, into an age where everything's on webcams and meetings and conferences and also gives us so many more tools to use to our advantage. It can be, it can go the other way as well. Sure. But um, to use that to be able to say, this is the new behavior that I was talking about that came up, you know? Yeah. And I think a lot of the parents don't spend time reviewing it, but it, it makes, if you, it makes you feel better and you have yeah. the money to spend on it, yeah. I'm all for it. Okay. And, and 
I support it. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I think it's a great thing, too. Um, but in terms of going back to expectations again, when you're interviewing somebody, you said mm -hmm. that you made a list of questions for your friend. Share with us, what are some of the questions that you suggest parents ask when interviewing a babysitter or to come to their home? I think the first important question is just to ask them what their background is with children. Mm -hmm. And then if you have a child with special needs, what is your background working with children with special needs? Mm -hmm. um, I think it would be important to ask them about a situation where they've felt like they needed to discipline a child or they have disciplined a child mm -hmm. because you kind of want to see their, uh, their answer on that, whether yeah. it fits your style. Um, and also asking them about their comfort level with challenging behaviors. Uh, asking them if they're, if they're willing to have training, whether that's CPR um, or e-learning or some kind of safety training. Yeah. Um, also asking them what their availability is because there is no bigger waste of time to have someone come in that's only available mornings and or only going to be around for a go, month right they're graduating in a month and leaving and going to spain right you know <laughs> you just spent a whole lot of time training them yeah so and knowing done all those things up front and then um asking them if they'd be willing to kind of go through a training process with you some mm -hmm. people might not feel like that's for them or they might not feel like they need that support so that might not be the right fit for your family. And but then, there are other people who are grateful and go, oh, I'd love to get, if, right, if you're I paying think, for it, I'd love to get CPR trained. Right, I would. Yeah. I would love for someone to pay for it for me. Yeah. So um, I think that those are important things to ask and making sure that you pay attention to whether they're on time and their interest level during the interview. Yeah. Um, and then if you do have a chance to observe them with their kid, how do they interact with their child? Yeah. Do they click? And trusting our intuitions and our child's kind of how our child inter interacts with yeah. them is important as well. Yeah, I think you know uh, if your child, you might love the person. If your child doesn't, then I, I think that's a really good indicator not to. But on the other hand, your child might love somebody, but something in you says uh uh, and I think you should listen to that too. Right, and I think as women, we we do have those yeah. feelings about people and feelings about situations, and a lot of the times we're right. Yeah, and you. <laughs> Sometimes, and I actually took a class in psychology in college where, and I always refer back to this, and I only took a couple of psychology classes. I'm not, you know, that's not my area. But I remember taking a class in, in social psychology where they talked about how sometimes you get a feeling and you're, you kind of fill in your brain. You say, well, it's probably this. It may not be that, but it's still something worth being concerned about. Right. You may not be able to label it and it may not be the thing that you're worried about because sometimes we make a leap to really horrible things. Um, right, but yeah. It, but it, and it may not be something horrible, but it might be something that's still important, that your brain has so much capability to notice so many things that it can't always language, but that you should always listen to your instincts. Yeah, and we tend to switch our switch our answer or we t tend to talk ourselves out of things yes but usually it is our first intuition that is correct yeah and they say that about tests you go with the first thing that you thought it was because yeah. sometimes you second guess yourself and you get that test back and yeah. it was the first thing that you thought yes. so um using that interview to judge some yeah. of those warning signs and look for them is important because yeah. we talked about if you're comfortable when you're away you're going to yeah. want to be away more yeah. and you're going to have less stress because you'll be able to be away more. Yeah. And um, I think it's great for kids to have people to look up to, especially younger college students for yeah. your son. He's younger. He wants yeah. to be around boys and guys yes. and that's cool. So um, the little girl that I babysit, she loves bows and oh. brushing my hair and me brushing her hair. Very so it's fun. it's fun. It's little, it's, um, it's really good for her mom she loves seeing us play dress up and do those things oh. and she doesn't always have time but she knows that her daughter's enjoying herself yeah. when she's not around in some ways it's sort of that big brother big sister kind of feel to right. it that you know you're giving them another role model which means you want to make sure it's the role model that you want but what a wonderful opportunity right uh we have friends that uh they always say to everybody who's reluctant to get a babysitter they're like you know you're cheating your child out of these people in their life and you're cheating yourself and of course we know that the divorce rate is high in general add right. other things on top of that and then you know our, our uh <laughs> 
our phrase for today, our jargon for today was EO. So, you know, make yourself underslept, overwhelmed, no time together. Right. What kind of an EO for success for uh, a happy marriage is that? Or a happy, you know, any kind of family life, uh, really. But you also don't want to get to the point where you can't handle your child anymore. Because we've been talking about kids who um, their behaviors might be more mild, they might have mm. more language, but we do have kids who have needs, and I've worked yeah. with them also, that are challenging for us yes. physically and emotionally. Yeah. So having someone come in and help with respite is really important because you don't want that child to be placed outside of the home. Right. And there is other research that suggests that bringing in a respite person to help does reduce that oh, that's great. happening in families. So it's one of the most underutilized resources, I think, I at agree. this time. And parents as much as people are working and worried about finances, this is a really great resource. And if you don't have respite, look into a babysitter. Yeah. There are and, and we, wonderful people out there. We mentioned um, respite in California through the regional center. And we know that the regional center funding has gone down substantially because there are funding issues. Um, but, you know, you can apply for a grant for respite. And there are other states that have respite programs. And you want to ask your local support group how do you get right. respite? How are you affording it? Do you have somebody that's paying for it? My understanding is that some insurance includes yeah. some money for respite. And if you think, oh, okay, it's not really worth it, but imagine if you're eligible for two hours of respite a week. And and let's say, you know, in the, in the worst case scenario of respite, that it's two hours of respite a week where you still are in the home when the child is there, that's two hours of sleep two hours of laundry, two hours of getting the house cleaned up. I mean, stop and think about what you can do. What can't right. you do with two hours? Or even going to the grocery store and getting all the marketing done in that two hours while somebody is with you with your child. I mean, really. Or even what if could you, you have another child in your home and you feel like you're spending so oh, much time. Point, we have Ashley. those someone called them a sandwich kid, a child who doesn't have special needs, but they're kind of in the middle of everything. Yep. They need one-on-one -on -one time also. Right, so maybe that two right. hours is just with them. You're playing with them and knowing that the other child is taking care of What right. a great point. Yes, so I, I've worked with families who use their time that way to spend one-on-one -on -one time with either child, and right. then I will work, work, not work with or you know, go do it. something else with the other child. And right. so their kids get one-on-one -on -one time with either mom or dad because... Otherwise, it, it's not easy when it's a small child and an older child because right. they're in opposite directions or twins yeah. or those kinds of things. Yeah. You want to spend one-on-one -on -one time, and that's important. A really definitely. great point. Okay. And so if people have more questions about babysitting or respite, they can write in and we'll refer the questions yeah, to you. Yeah, definitely. Because uh, she's an awesome, awesome babysitter, and we have to have you come back. I got I to gotta have a date with my husband sometime this lifetime. For sure. Uh, <laughs> So we're going to take a short break and come out back and, and close out the show. But Ashley, thank you so much for thank being here and sharing all me. this information. We really appreciate it. And I hope that to, to see you and your son and your husband soon. And I hope that parents will take advantage of this. Yes, really. absolutely. Thank you so much.